Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to be back. It's me again. This is uh, class three, interfacing to other data mining packages. We're going to concentrate on the R package for most of this class, but just to begin with, we're going to look at the libsvm and liblinear packages. These are written by the same people. Uh, they're widely used outside of Weka, and they're also Weka's most popular packages. So you should install them. I've got them installed, and also you should install the grid search package as well. Both of these packages are to do with support vector machines. Weka already has the SMO implementation for support vector machines that we've seen before in the first course, but libsvm is more flexible and liblinear can be much faster. It's important to know that SVMs can be either linear or nonlinear through a kernel function mentioned very briefly in lesson 4.5 of that earlier course. And also they can do classification or regression, which we haven't mentioned. Weka contains SMO reg for regression, the same algorithm. We're going to use the grid search uh, methods to optimize parameters for SVMs, which is quite important. So let's just look at libsvm and liblinear, these two packages, and also the standard SMO and SMO reg. All three implement linear SVMs. All but liblinear are capable of uh, accommodating nonlinear kernels. LibSVM does one class classification, which you will see in the activity associated with this lesson. LibLinear does logistic regression. It's uh, linear. We saw logistic regression in lesson 4.4 of the first course. LibLinear is very fast, and LibLinear can operate with the L1 norm, which I'm not going to explain in this lesson. So just a uh, a quick uh, look at liblinear. I did a speed test. I used the data generator on Weka's pre-process panel to generate 10,000 instances of this data LED24. Liblinear took uh, two seconds to build the model. LibSVM took 18 seconds to build the model, but that's a slightly unfair comparison because it's using a non-linear kernel. So when I changed it to use a linear kernel, it took 10 seconds. And the SMO with the default parameters, which is a linear kernel, took uh, 21 seconds. So you can see liblinear is quite a lot faster. Now, let's just talk about linear boundaries and uh, support vector machines in general. Support vector machines try to drive a channel between the two classes. Here we've got the blue class and the green class, and they try and drive a channel kind of halfway between the classes to leave as large a margin as possible. In this case, uh, we've got zero errors on the training data and a pretty small margin, the distance between the dashed lines. However, when we look at the test data. Now this is an artificial data set, but in this case you can see that some points in the test data are being classified incorrectly, four points in fact. If instead of using this line, we used, we turned it a bit and used a line with a much larger margin, although it makes one error on the training data, this particular, in this particular situation it gets all of the test data correct, no errors on the test data. So it's an advantage sometimes to have a large margin, even at the expense of errors on the training data. SVMs try to give you large margin classifiers. And here we are with a nonlinear data set. I've uh, drawn a linear boundary here, the boundary that's produced by liblinear or libsvm with a linear kernel, or indeed the SMO package and the SMO classifier in Weka. And uh, this gives uh, 21 errors on the data set, on the training set. Here's a nonlinear boundary for the same data set implemented by libsvm with an RBF kernel. I've got this data set open in Weka's boundary visualizer over here, and I'm going to just choose uh, libsvm. Luckily I've installed the package already and I just start. Okay, let's speed this up. There we are, that's the result, and you can see it's making some errors down here and up here on the data set, on the training set. Let's just go to the Explorer. I've got the same data file open and I'm going to go again to libsvm and take a look uh, we're plotting the training set here, so uh, if I look at that, I get a total of nine errors, four and five, respectively, on the different uh, different training set parts. That's with the default parameters. If I change the libsvm parameters, then I can get this boundary. Now, this is uh, quite a good boundary because it uh, gives zero errors on the training set, but it gives poor generalization because it doesn't drive a channel right right between those two classes. 
with different parameters, I can continue to get zero errors on the training set and a much more satisfactory boundary which will probably generalize better. Whenever you use nonlinear support vector machines, you need to optimize the parameters. And the parameters we're talking about are called cost and gamma. When we optimize parameters in Weka, we use the grid search method, which is in the meta category. This is the parameters for grid, grid search. And the default configuration for grid search, well, let's look at it. Down at the bottom, it says use a SMO reg, that's the default, and evaluate using the correlation coefficient. We're going to need to change those. And then the first six boxes are talking about X of the grid and the next six boxes about Y. The property being optimized, the X property being optimized is called C and that's going from 10 cubed down to 10 to the minus 3 in multiplicative steps of 10. That's what those first six parameters signify. And the second six parameters give the same range with the Y property of kernel dot gamma. That's for SMO reg. If we want to use libsvm, we need to change some things. We're going to optimize the properties cost and gamma. We're going to choose the classifier libsvm, and we're going to evaluate using accuracy. So let me set that up in Weka. I'm going to choose grid search from the meta category. And in grid search, I'm going to first of all uh, choose the classifier. I'm going to choose uh, SM, lib SVM. I'm going to optimize the, uh, let's move this up so that you can see, optimize the accuracy. And then the two properties involved are cost and gamma. If I run that, oh, it's finished here, and the result is an accuracy uh, is the parameters are a thousand for the x coordinate that's cost and ten for the y coordinate that's gamma and we've got a hundred percent accuracy with that data set well we could see we were going to get a hundred percent accuracy when we looked at the boundary visualization that's for lib svm if we were to choose a different method like smo it's got different parameters so let me just look at smo here I'm going to choose SMO. I need to find the appropriate parameters. Here's the SMO parameters, and uh, I want C here for the cost. And uh, if I look in the kernel, I want an RBF kernel. And in the RBF kernel, one of the, the key parameter here is gamma. So it's kernel dot gamma. Kernel here dot gamma here. So I'm going to use C and kernel dot gamma, C and kernel dot gamma, and that would allow me to optimize SMO. Okay, so grid search is fairly complicated to use, but it's necessary to optimize the parameters when using nonlinear support vector machines. So here's a summary. We've looked at liblinear, which does uh, all things linear, linear SVMs, logistic regression, uh, and it can use the L1 norm, which minimizes the sum of absolute values, not the sum of squares, which has big advantages under certain conditions, and is very fast. LibSVM is all things SVM, linear and nonlinear SVMs. So the practical advice when you want to use SVMs is first use a linear SVM, do it quickly with liblinear perhaps and see how you get on, and then for a nonlinear SVM select the uh, RBF kernel. But when you select a nonlinear kernel like RBF, it's really important to optimize cost and gamma, and you can do this using the grid search method. Here's a reference to uh, support vector machines to uh, uh, these packages. And uh, the activity, as I said before, will involve you looking at one class classification, an interesting thing that libsvm can do. Good luck with that, and we'll see you later. Bye for now.